Now, Prime Minister Narendra Modi and U.S. President Joe Biden are scheduled to hold bilateral talks tomorrow evening. This, as per Indian Standard Time, just ahead of the G20 summit with a strong commitment to following COVID-19 protocols. Climate change, economic cooperation and multilateral development bank reform will be high on the agenda when Prime Minister Narendra Modi and U.S. President Joe Biden hold a bilateral meeting in New Delhi on the sidelines of the G20 summit. Another issue that is now likely to figure prominently in the conversation between the two leaders is expected to be the Russia-Ukraine war. The agenda for the G20 particularly, the economic cooperation and multilateral investment opportunities that stand before the G20 and the President's strong desire to see multilateral development bank reform and reshaping might be discussed in the bilateral meet that is to take place in a day's time. In the meantime, let's also listen in to what President Joe Biden has to say, also what White House has said during their press briefing. I've been tested again today. I'm clear across the board, but they keep telling me because this has to be 10 days or something, I got to keep wearing it. But don't tell them I didn't have it on when I walked in. <laughs> All right. The president tested negative for COVID-19 this morning. Following negative tests on Monday night and also yesterday, he is not experiencing any symptoms, which of course is a good thing. The First Lady is doing well as well, and she remains in Delaware, which is also a good thing. The CDC guidelines recommend, as I said before, as you all know, a combination of masking, testing, and monitoring for symptoms. The President is doing all that he can, of course, in consultation with, the, with his physician, and so he's keeping, uh, keeping with the CDC guide, guidelines, as you all know. Look, uh, we commend the Prime Minister, Prime Minister Modi, uh, in his leadership of the G20 uh, this year, and we are committed to helping ensure that India has a successful G20 host uh, as, as they host the this year. And so that's going to be continue to be our commitment. During, uh, during Prime Minister Modi's visit here in June, as you've covered very closely, the President and Prime Minister shared their determination to deliver on shared priorities uh, at the summit. And so the President is very much looking forward to continuing that work with the Prime Minister and uh, other leaders uh, later this week as we head out tomorrow. Here at home, President Biden has w worked to rebuild the American economy, as you've all heard him say, from the bottom up and the middle out, by making smart investments in the industries of the future while tackling climate change and empowering workers. And we believe that those investments are paying off. We think countries around the world, too, can uh, benefit from a similar type of approach and that we can help them as well by mobilizing investment to support them in tackling the challenges that they face. And that's one of our main focuses heading into the G20, delivering on an agenda of fundamentally reshaping and scaling up the multilateral development banks, especially the World Bank and the IMF. We know that these institutions are some of the most effective tools that we have for mobilizing transparent, high-quality investment into developing countries. And that's why the United States has championed the major effort that is currently underway to evolve these institutions so that they are up to the challenges of today and tomorrow. South Asia correspondent for The Washington Post, Karishma Mehrotra, joins me live with more inputs. Many thanks to you, Karishma, for joining in. Now, what are expected to be the key sticking points for the Indo-US bilateral? Hi, thank you so much for having me. Um, in terms of sticking points, I think actually if you look at the priorities of what India has had as their talking points and what the U.S. has also had, they're mostly in cohesion and that aligns with the fact that the larger relationship that the two have shown in the past, recent past, seems to largely align. Um, from what I understand, the relationship, um, some people say, is the best it's ever been, especially in terms of intelligence sharing. And in terms of their geopolitical goals concerning specifically China are for the most part aligned. Um, one sticking point, of course, could be the Russia-Ukraine war and the language that that war takes in the joint communique. Mm. The fact is, though, that the U.S. and Europe probably took a harsher stance on wanting India to condemn the Russian invasion earlier on. And it's unclear if that's something that U.S. would necessarily bring up in a bilateral with 
now its close friend. Although when we discuss G20 overall, of course, that seems to be one of the main sticking points of the leaders together. Right. Um, so some of the other sticking points could be around climate goals. We've seen reports that um, there's ongoing arguments from multiple sides that the similar standards for climate action plans shouldn't be applied to developing countries. So that might be another sticking point as well. All right. Now, John Kirby has confirmed that U.S. is looking forward to warmly welcoming the African Union as a permanent member of the G20. Is this achievement key to India's success as the G20 president? I think on the measures that India has determined for itself in, in, in um, labeling whether or not it's a success, surely I think that having India become a voice for the global south and within that roping in the African Union within the G20 is definitely a marker of success for India. I think it also is a signal that potentially India could try and divert as much attention as it can to A, the Russia-Ukraine war, and B, the fact that President Xi is not attending. So I think on those markers of success that India seems to be holding for itself, definitely having the U.S. agree about the African Union coming into the G20 um, would definitely be a good sign for the country. It's interesting, Karishma, that you mentioned that she is not going to be there. And considering President Xi will not be attending the summit, Chinese Premier Li Qiang, of course, as we all know, will be representing China at the G20 instead of President Xi. And this at a time when the Chinese economy is coping with sagging growth and a possible property debt crisis. Will Biden be at an advantage with emerging markets of the global south as Xi Jinping chooses to snub G20? I'm, I'm not so sure that anyone's relationship with emerging economies entirely hinges on whether or not the president or the premier of China attends the summit. I think actually much of that relationship depends more not on who's at the summit, but who's present on the ground in those emerging economies. In some of those emerging economies, China is much more present than the U.S., and in some of those, not so much. Um, and let's also keep in mind that China does interact with those emerging markets in other forums, for example, BRICS and SEO, and BRICS has also recently expanded. So I think that um, I wouldn't hinge it entirely on that. But one way to look at it is Biden's advantage is um, not whether or not she, President Xi comes, but the fact that Biden himself gets to come. And there was um, speculation about him getting COVID, given the fact that his wife tested positive. So if he hadn't been able to come, I think that would have been the loss for um, America's international Absolutely. relations. And how U.S. in fact steers reforming of the global banking system is also going to be extremely crucial for these emerging economies as we speak. Many thanks to you, Karishma Marotra, for bringing in Thank those inputs to our show.